When you see me, hold your bag tighter because I might just rob you. When you see me, avoid eye contact because I might just stare so deep into your soul that you run away. Oh, but when you see me, do run because I may just hunt you down. And when you see me, scream because I may just even kill you with this smile. Dear black strong minorities, when you see me, extend your vibrant smile because it brings my heart peace even just for a while. When you see me, share your vibe because you light up a room with just your laugh and being with you makes me proud to be black. Everyday racism is real. As young people, it affects us more than you realise. It leaves our society confused. It's so unnatural and it's something that needs to change. We are young people from Moss Side. This is our voice. These are our words and our experiences. The media. Negative stereotypes and... Government and... Slavery, for me personally, for me is a like, main reason. Well, racism started, obviously, from a long time ago. So, slave trade. Hard labour. Ku Klux Klan. A recent review by the Commission of Racial Equality revealed entrenched systematic inequalities in the UK. Black people are more likely to be victims of crime and be treated more harshly in the criminal justice system. Say so we're walking in the street with our friends and like, there's a group of us, about four of us, and then we're like in a busy area in town and there's loads of people of white skin colour in a white in, in a suit. We have to change the way we walk or like the way we act. For other people looking at you, they're probably more scared or like think you're up to, like you're doing something, you're up to something or you're just causing trouble. People obviously automatically deem it as being a rough gang walking down the street and they'll feel intimidated. So what you do is you just like try to act calm and like you wouldn't act yourself, you'd act like someone you're not just to make them feel comfortable. Because let's say I'm in an environment where I'm not being, oh, when I was younger, if I was in an environment where I'm not being overly black, whatever that is, yeah, not being overly stereotypically black, having my white friends or my white friends tell me, um, you know, Ross, you're not even, I don't even see you as a black guy, I don't even see you as black. Like, what do you mean, then? What do you see me as? You know what I mean? Because I, last time I checked, I was a black guy, so I was, well, my team, you know what I mean? Why is it bad? And what have I done that's not black? What's black to you? There's a stereotype that all black girls are kind of like, do you know what I mean? Like, like all black girls are kind of like aggressive or that like they're gonna kick off. So I know that like when girls push past me or um, accidentally touch me, they're just like, just repeating themselves like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I think they'd be more, the other person would be more scared, especially if it was a white person, like a black person to a white person. So personally, if it was me, I'd probably apologise to just reassure them that like I'm not an aggressive person or anything. Like, even when it comes to the movies, they're all the same. It's just kiddlehood over and over again. You know what I mean? So you can't ask why you walk down the street and someone thinks, oh, well, like, I'm just going to move out of the way. And then that changes you. Also, I think if you're black and you're going into a shop like that, then big groups will... Like, I don't think you could go in a big group. You'd have to go in small groups or by yourself because it'd be like... They'd just be watching, you know, to see if you're doing anything bad or... I would call a taxi because to get home, as any other person would do. So I called this taxi, the taxi came. Um, so I got in the taxi. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to my side. He said, all right, pay up front. Money up front, straight away. Or if that's even if they let you in a the taxi. He came to it, he put the money up front and everything. And he was, he was about to drive off. And as soon as he asked where we were going, um, one of my mates said from our side, one of us said Fallowfield. He said, no, can't take you, sorry. Even though the money was there, he said, no, can't take you, sorry. And took us out. Deep down, I was like, oh, this guy, really? So I was thinking in my head, which I actually said to him as well. I said, why do you want me to pay up front? Because I'm younger, black, and from my side. He was like, people from there don't usually pay. So I said, you know what, I want to get home. Give him my money. It made me feel not even upset because it was something I would expect nowadays. More of a, oh, again. Because I don't know, I'll, I'll try to catch myself sometimes walking in the street and taking on that, how people see me a little bit, being a little bit hostile for no reason. You know what I mean? Like, usually I'm, I'm trying to be lighthearted and funny, but because of how I feel people see me, you know what I mean? I've just gone, and I've taken it on without even thinking about it. It's scary that you can do that, but yeah. But with years of that being put into your head and into your mind, this is how you are, and people treating you like that, then eventually 
It's like when teachers treat you bad, you start acting bad because it's self-fulfilling after that. It's become, you just fall into the trap. Negative. Most things negative. Violent. Criminal. Poor. Uneducated. Gangster. Unsuccessful. Lazy. Yeah. Aggressive. I won't say ugly, but not the ideal image of beautiful. Like long hair, um, straight hair, green eyes. Like straight hair, light skin. Having light skin. Light skin, yeah, light skin, something like that. Light skin, perfect body. Perfect skin, good teeth, good nails, eyelashes, whatever. You know what I mean, like curly hair, eyebrows on fleek. <laughs> the lighter your skin is, or the lighter your eyes are, um, straighter hair, lighter hair. Just everything lighter basically is classed as more beautiful. The idolised features more when a white person than black people when it's their natural features. And it's basically the opposite character characteristics to like what the normal features of a black person would be. Like that's how it's portrayed, but it shouldn't be like that. Yeah, because my school as well was predominantly um, white people, so, and it was like, they're very posh white people, so they're not even educated in about black people at all. So I thought like being black was just like the black sheep, basically. I felt like the black sheep. This is like a horrible question, but did you ever think, I wish I wasn't black? Yeah. yeah. I, never thought I used to yeah. tell yeah. people my name was Yasmin. I'm not even I used to tell people my name was Yasmin. I, I thought I was white. <laughs> I don't know why. I lived in a white area. And I just thought I was white. <laughs> yeah. I caught, when I first met him, I was like, what, six? And I said, my um, name's Alex, five or six. And I said, my name was Alex. When I was in primary school, that one haircut that everyone used to want to have. I was black in it, so obviously I can't get it. But I used to have one spiky hair, but I used to want that Mohican. <laughs> obviously, I went to school full of white kids, but, and I wanted that high haircut, and obviously I could never get it. But now, I've, now I want curly hair, and obviously I can't get it either. But you know, <laughs> it's just one of them. Also, I'm proud of like, my blackness, and I'm proud of my, like, my brown skin. So I'm like, look at it, man. Love it, like I love it, you know what I mean? Appreciate it, it's like chocolate, you know what I mean? Like, like darker skin is seen as not nice, but yet they want to be dark, but not too dark, if that makes sense. So like, they'll tan the skin, but they don't want to be black like us, but they still want to be dark. And black people want to bleach their skin, so it's like, it's kind of reverse. We want what they want, and then they want what we want. It's being physically strong, like, good at sports. Sports. Sports, singing, dancing, running, basketball, that, that's an obvious one. Getting girls, fighting, any sort of criminal activity, and rapping. Too many black mothers left grieving, black bodies bleeding, are you believing now? Cause y'all wanna shout conspiracy? Before even looking at the imagery, if you just open your eyes, you will really see how the system made my pigment an enemy. Pig sent to get on me, get sent to heaven easily. Your ignorance displeases me, you seem to be suffering from disease, but please, you can't act like it ain't going on no more. Felicia. Shaniqua. Fantasia. Lucretia. Sharkisha. Like, they always put Isha on the end, like Shardisha, Kanisha. Like they just make they'll make up a name and then just put Isha on the end and it's like a black name. My friend from Loretta, his name's I'm not gonna say his name, but he has a different name and I said, Why did you change the name? It was like because I used to get bullied and stuff. Well I don't really use um my dad's African second name because I just feel like you might get like, people might question you on it or like people might take the mick out of it. So I'll just use my mum's second name, which sounds more like more English than more of an Irish second name. So like it doesn't really get a reaction out of a crowd. What reaction would your dad's name get? Well, people probably laugh or something or probably go like, what kind of name is that? Someone said to me the other day that my name's a black name. I was speaking to him and he was like, um, so what's your name then? And I went, um, Tiani went, that's a black name, that in it, and I was like, what do you mean a black name? It's Greek, actually, and it's just like, no, don't take offence to anyone. I was just thinking, don't try and tell me that that's not offensive. Because it is, because there's bad connotations behind the idea of someone having a black name. Like, yeah, my college applications, I fully changed it. From, yeah. All of it? All of so it? That name doesn't even exist. So, so you, no, really? just to check on me. 
So the name that you wrote down, what did you, the, the name that you wrote down, what did you think that made you seem like? More what? More of a civilised student. More professional. Yeah, more professional. I personally think that when people are saying, like, about black names and stuff, I think it's just like, you just assume that I'm just ghetto or something like that. That's what that's what it means. If someone says a black name, that's what they mean, don't they? They just mean ghetto, I think. I even had someone suggest to me, though, that I should change my name. I think it was my auntie. I'm not going to say her name. Um, she told me that because I want to I wanna do law at uni and stuff, she said it might be worth, like, worthwhile changing my actual name legally by Deepon. Because that it might help me to get into um, unis and into job placements easier. Come back deep. It's mad, isn't it? Now tell my friends when you have a complicated name. My name's Russ. It's not a complicated. I really want to change to something more powerful than African yet. But I will do that eventually. But what's it called? When I got friends with names, I'm like, correct people, man. Correct people. You know what I mean? Like, don't just let. That's another thing that people have in the head that they can just get your name wrong, and it's okay. That's another kind of privileged thing, especially with teachers. As a, there's less than what? 10 black people Three in our school. That's mind, just simple as that. For a black student, um, I'd definitely say teachers expect less of you. It's like harder for you to achieve well. And if they do do something good, it's like a surprise for that teacher. Or if they do something bad, it's more like, oh, they're black. I remember the incident in lesson where like a few of my white friends were like laughing really loud. And then, like, when I started to laugh, I got told off and I got, like, my first detention. My teachers used to try and make jokes to the rest of the class that I'd try and steal something in the classroom, and that simply came from the fact that I was black. My form tutor sent me to the pastoral office, and then they basically had a go at me for suspecting the teacher was a racist, and, like, I don't really feel like they did anything to help me. Your teacher just expects you to be over aggressive in class, so we'll see if they said something to you and you didn't agree, they'd expect you to just be rearing up, shouting. Well, it was year seven, I, I like cried after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I suspected our teacher was a racist and they didn't do anything. The, you just said this one sentence that, like, that kind of hit me or something. It's like, he said, like, being black's like a disadvantage because like every time like say you walk down the street you just get like bullied and like and uh, I I would probably say like sir that don't happen to me so how is being black a disadvantage he's like it's just, he's like it just is. On a scale of one to ten, how racist the I'd say a six seven. I'd say a seven or an eight. Nine, because most of the time it's like it's. I get told off most of the time, so I'm gonna say no. They expect you to not take school seriously. So when, like, you do take school seriously, it's like wow. But if it was just another white person, they'd probably just be like, that's just another good student. But if you were doing really good and you were taking school seriously, they'd be like, oh wow, this student's amazing because it's just not what they expect of you. But to be calm, they'd expect you to be. Excelling sports, but not in academic lessons. Did you get taught in Marcus at school? Is that a joke? Oh. We have learned about slavery, but that's it. No, no, never in primary school, no. never for the five years of high school. Wasn't what we get is every black Christian won't forget one day in assembly. We get the half an hour and we talk about people that we know about, Martin Luther King, yeah, um, Usain Bolt, um, <laughs> Andy Cole. <laughs> and you just go around and just chat rubbish about things we already know that just happens in the newspaper. Like they're reading out in the newspaper or something. Like you're telling us stuff that we know. We want to learn new things about our heritage and our race and you just, just rubbish. Our school, you would cancel school in a day. <laughs> the school would turn into, I'm not even joking. I think we've grown a tolerance to it, do you know what I mean? We know that people aren't educated. We know that people have got no co common sense. We've dealt with it for five years. But if you were to come in and spend one day in our school and mm. hear the kind of stuff we hear or experience the stuff that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis, you would literally cancel all of them. The school would get canceled. It just shows that teachers are coming into the education system as well as coming into our schools with the prejudgment that if you're from a certain background that you'll be inclined to act a certain way and and also think a certain way and that automatically puts people from a, from a black mixed ethnic minority background well behind other students because they feel as if they should live up to a certain expectation and that necessarily isn't true and that's why things need to change.
We are three times more likely to be permanently excluded than our white peers. Black graduates. And 23% less than white graduates on average. Unemployment rates among us are twice as high than for our white peers. Oh, there is that one story. Remember when we came back from basketball and them girls? Oh, oh that, that was... I grew up quite, with quite a lot of white people in my school. And the first diss to come out, if there was ever any problem, would be a racial one. I'm on my way to catch up with him because he walked on ahead. And then I, wait, I waited for him to come. At the bus stop. And then we see these three girls, right? And they start like, you know, making fun of him. So then I back him up. And then like, one of the girls calls me a nigger. I don't know, I think the word, there's so much power in it, but it's more like, it's definitely more than meaning. I can hear someone say it, like the football guys, I can hear them say it and be like, but if someone says it, I don't know, something about someone actually saying it, meaning to hurt you, that changes it and almost like feel like, I don't know. You just feel like you can't let that slide because of everything that people have been through. You know I mean? Like, I'm not really offended by that, but like, you see the word, like the way it's used so easily, like lightly, is like, it's just hurtful. So even with basketball, you'll be playing, and like, depending where you are, you'll hear stuff, you know what I mean? From the crowd or whatever, and you're like, what? And it's, well, the table official one time called um, one of our guys on the bench, the N-word. We couldn't prove it though. You know one of them, and it was like, Whoa. like, because there's this term barriers that like people use to refer to white people. I remember one time, like, I think about setting the joke and way, and then one white guy was like, uh, "How come I can't call you a nigger, but you can call me a Barry?" So I was like, "Barry and nigger are two different words. Like, it's not even like nigger has like history behind it. Barry must have been made up like what." Last Barry. year or something, Barry is like. He said, he, right, he, said, said, he said, us calling him a Barry is basically like, why can't I call you a nigger then? Because he, I'm being racist. He said, yeah. <laughs> why can't I call you a nigger? Yeah. It's like Barry's racist. So it's, not, it's not really like a. I don't know. So sometimes there's white people that in a conversation will use it and I'll be like, can you just not use that, please? And depending on their reaction, I'll know when they want to use it. It's like, why can't I say it? It's like, oh, why? Why do you need. Like, with every privilege that you have, you want to take my one privilege of being able to say this word that you can't say. Why do you want to say it for, man? You know what I mean? But then again, we say it to each other, but I think trying to fight that battle is too big. You end up fighting each other too much. Like, you know what? If he, if he says the N-word and he means brethren, then he means brethren. Like, I'm not sure what to do about that. Like, he's grown up saying it. Why am I bothered about it so much? You know what I mean? Let's worry about the systematic oppression that's mashing us all up. You know what I mean? Just end up in circles. We are hugely underrepresented in positions of power such as judges and police chiefs. Black people are three times more likely to be prosecuted for the same offence than white people. In Manchester, 66% of the population is white British, with the remaining 34% being everybody else. 76% of serious youth violence is white British, yet 89% of those on the GMP gang database are black. Life chances for young black people have got worse over the past five years. They are now the most challenging for generations. We are more likely to live in poverty and more likely to live in poor housing than our white friends. Well, when I consider everything, it's not just like today I've considered it, but it's, it's better that when I come together and speak about it with other people, it's more of a, yeah, I'm not isolated to it and it's not just like, I'm like, left out from society, that like other people are experiencing the same thing I'm experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's been bugging me for a long time, it's made me, it makes me feel like I'm not, think, well, I'm not thinking about it day-to-day, -day, I'm just calm, but now we've like, gone over all the topics, it just it just like makes fire go in my belly, it makes me want to teach other people and let them know what's going on in today's society, not just in my side, but all over the world and how people should, like need to learn and start gaining some facts on the heritage and other people's heritage so they can know what's going on and stop being ignorant. If I look back to it, it makes me feel shocked. I feel disappointed about everything that's happening and that nothing seems to have changed. 
Everyday racism is actually like real because if I'm not being asked these questions, I'd probably just see it as like something that just happens on a daily basis. But when you're being asked it, it kind of like you sit down and kind of think about it and like, wow, like if I go into a shop, I might get looked at differently. If I get into a taxi, I might get charged, you know, a higher price. If I do well in school, it might be like a surprise to teachers. So it's like, you do realise that these things, they do happen every day. And it's not just like, like it's not just big things that are like racist every day. Like us young people, we, we're up against racism all the time. And I think it's only when you sit down that you realise what you have to actually fight against on a daily basis. Living in a war between police and the people. But this is meant to be a world where everyone is equal. The feds trying to obtain authority, but they want to ridicule the majority. Day by day they get away with murder, but this corrupt mentality can't go on any further. Their job is to help and protect the youths, but we seem to be the ones that they continue to abuse. How can they expect young people to follow the system when we remain the ones who are their victim? Our young people being discriminated upon, but the spotlight never gets shone on the amount of black lives taken. It's almost like our work has been forsaken. Have they forgotten their priority? It's not to kill the majority, but to focus on making the police and people live in unity. That's something that would actually be beneficial to our community. Many young lost talents because equality can't be balanced. But black lives matter, so young people believe it, because that's something the police and its system will never admit. They're hating on us and we have proof, but yet they wonder why we've become so aloof. It's a situation that makes me cry, but more youths cannot die. How long shall we let this carry on? A change must now be done, because the power of people is stronger than the people this in power. Is a